Hey everyone, so a while back I took a look at the mobile version of Nvidia's GTX 1080 and was pretty impressed. And now in this video sponsored by HP Omen, it's time to move on to the GTX 1070. So this is the Omen 17, a high-end configuration that pairs a top-end Intel i7 7700HQ processor with the GTX 1070 and a lovely 4K G-Sync screen. Now I went into this one with a few questions. Can the mobile 1070 match its desktop equivalent? Can you overclock it? And fundamentally, can it run taxing games well at 4K resolution? I mean, the kind of perceived wisdom is that Ultra HD resolutions are 1080 and 1080 Ti territory. And yet, in our recent 4K on a budget series, we've had some surprisingly good results from a GTX 970 and clearly the 1070 is a generational leap ahead of that. And on top of that, we really can't stress enough how much of a game changer G-Sync display technology is, but more on that in a bit. Now there's another reason I wanted to look at the mobile 1070 specifically while 1060 and 1080 have very similar specs to the desktop parts, the 1070 is actually a little different. It has more CUDA cores than the full fat plug-in card for home PCs, offset by a reduction in clock speeds. Okay, but real life performance, particularly when it comes to Nvidia boost clocks, is very different from the specs. So let's kick off with a look at Crisis 3 here. 4K, very high settings. Well, looking at the GPU readouts, the clock rate differential is actually rather substantial, around 240 megahertz, 16% faster in favor of the desktop chip. And yet despite this wide yawning chasm in clocks, performance is actually identical. Point for point, the mobile 1070's extra CUDA cores are somehow making up the difference. Let's look next at Far Cry Primal. The clock speeds are actually even higher here. There's about a 280 megahertz difference in the speed of each 1070. However, once again, when we factor in the performance metrics, the extra CUDA cores are making a difference, returning us to parity. Now let's just say that I found this pleasantly surprising. And the fact that we have this parity at the lower clocks on mobile, this is actually a really good thing as generally a slower chip is a more power efficient chip. And of course, it opens the door to overclocking. Yes, overclocking a mobile laptop GPU. Popping into MSI Afterburner here, you'll note that the power limit cannot be adjusted. And this is the key to max overclocks on a desktop GPU. So it's fair to say that your overhead will be more limited, but yet, well, an extra 150 to the core is pretty much what you can add on the standard 1070, and a plus 300 megahertz bump to the memory is welcome too. But I get the idea that we're still power limited. You don't actually get that extra 150 megahertz boost in all scenarios. So in Far Cry Primal, it's only about 80 megahertz faster. The end result, we're about 6% faster overall. And again, in Crisis 3, we're getting the same 80 megahertz boost with the overall clock in place and an increase in performance of 5%. Now that's not a huge amount in pure FPS terms at 4K resolution, but obviously that percentage should scale the lower down the resolution chain you go. But these are benchmarks at 4K with everything ramped up to ultra, so obviously performance shouldn't be anything like as good as a desktop GTX 1080 Ti or whatever, but let's not underestimate what the 1070 can do. Its performance level is equivalent to the last gen Titan X Maxwell, and to have that kind of rendering power in a laptop, well that's phenomenal. But with the GTX 1070, well, there's a range of titles that simply work great at 4K with minimal tweaks to settings. So to begin with, let's take a look at Metal Gear Solid 5. I've cut back a couple of the more intensive settings from extra high to high, but well, this is a fully viable 4K 60 frames per second experience with just a couple of minor frame rate drops. I mean, some tweaks to effects settings could sort that out, but left as it is, it's not really an issue owing to the display properties of the G-Sync screen, as I'll explain later. And let's consider that resolution for a moment. At typical viewing distances, 4K on a desktop monitor or in living room conditions, well, the, the pixel pitch is so fine there, there's a very good case that the GPU is being put to use uh, kind of rendering details that you won't actually see. So to have that same resolution on a 17 inch laptop screen, it's frankly insane. Anti-aliasing, you don't really need it on most content and the effect is still kind of like an ultra super sampled image. 
So in utilizing a 1070 on a 4K screen, there's actually a fair degree of wiggle room on what your native rendering resolution can be. But hey, let's see how we get on with a few key titles. Crisis 3, Yes, this is a very demanding 4K game, but with a mixture of very high, high and medium settings along with no anti-aliasing, well, by and large, we cruise from 45 FPS up to 60 FPS. Now, personally, I don't like that kind of inconsistency, but on a G-Sync screen, that situation changes significantly. Just Cause 3, explosions can cause sort of minor issues to performance but with only some small tweaks we are at a fairly consistent 40 frames per second hitman this is another testing game but with shadow features set to medium we're at 45 frames per second pretty consistently in one of the game's most demanding stages i mean on a normal screen that's a horrific recipe for either lots of screen tearing or some nasty v-sync judder but again G-Sync is the game changer here. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is actually more demanding in many ways than Battlefield 1, even though it's running on the same engine. Now I could mix and match ultra high and medium presets here at an 83% resolution scale, and it still looked awesome on this 4K screen. But yeah, Battlefield 1, just like Mirror's Edge, it's all about the settings tweaks. Now, I'm a firm believer that we're getting too hung up on ramping everything up to ultra settings when the visual return doesn't really warrant the GPU resources required. In my experience, low, of course, generally looks terrible, but there's almost always a fairly substantial leap up to medium, another bump up to high, while the difference between high and ultra is usually fairly minimal. I mean, it'll vary on a game-by-game -game basis, of course, and indeed on a setting by setting basis. But the point is that most games are built to scale. You don't need to change global settings to get drastic improvements to performance. Targeted tweaks can make a great deal of difference. So here's some Battlefield 1 scaling benchmarks between full 2160p, a 1944p, which is 90% resolution scale, and 1800p, all at ultra settings. Now with each step down the resolution chain, we gain 15% of additional performance it's still not enough to hit 60 frames per second, even at 1800p. But here's the thing, dropping post-processing down to medium while leaving everything else at ultra works a treat. At 1944p, 90% of 4K res, G-Sync works its magic, smoothing out performance between 50 to 60 frames per second, while at 1800p, at these settings, you rarely deviate at all from 60 frames per second. Now, yes, obviously, a more powerful GPU can run higher pixel counts and better settings, but this still looks tons better than running at 1440p, the 1070's traditional sweet spot. And on this laptop with this 4K screen, that's the way forward. Okay, so let's talk a bit about why G-Sync is such a game changer, particularly for a laptop. Okay, so on a standard 60 hertz screen, if you can't sustain 60 frames per second frame rate, you have three options. You can keep V-Sync on, but you'll note ugly stutter on screen. Alternatively, you can turn V-Sync off, but then you have to put up with horrible screen tearing. Or there's a kind of nuclear option to lock to 30 frames per second with V-Sync on. It's slower, obviously, but pretty easy to configure so that one frame locks to two screen refreshes. It's consistent at least, and with the increased headroom, you can scale up effects, but G-Sync, well, this changes everything. Essentially, with this technology, the GPU tells the screen when it's good and ready to produce the next frame, smoothing off lower frame rate experiences, something we can't really demonstrate in real time on a non-G-Sync screen, but we can try to simulate it. So let's take a notional 40 frames per second refresh here. Using the power of slow motion video, we can show you what 40 frames per second looks like on a standard screen with V-Sync on. And it's pretty grim, right? Nasty stutter and judder, it's just not good enough. And now let's do the same with V-Sync off. I mean, it's smoother, of course, but the trade is that horrible tearing. And now let's simulate G-Sync here. You get the fluidity of V-Sync off with the image integrity of V-Sync on. Now let's look at all three together in a split screen format. I mean, the difference speaks for itself. And the point is that this smoothness and fluidity, well, it doesn't just work at 40 frames per second. It works at virtually any frame rate. It's awesome. Okay, so how do I personally use G-Sync? Well, on a normal screen, I like to tweak settings for locked 60 frames per second gameplay. But this obviously involves visual compromises. But with G-Sync, I can target a 50 to 60 frames per second frame rate window. And that means I can go easier on compromises to visual settings 
and not really notice the difference when the performance drops. G-Sync really is that good, and I like to use it for fast action titles and first person shooters in that kind of 50 to 60 window. Now with more demanding games like Just Cause 3, I can lower that window to like 35 to 45 frames per second. Now obviously it's not quite as smooth, but it's still tons better than a 30 frames per second lock. But you know, if that frame rate window idea isn't working for you, and if you really want a more consistent experience, G-Sync can still deliver. Okay, so here's the thing. On a standard screen, you have two options for that sort of consistent experience, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. But on a G-Sync screen, it can be anything you want. It can be 40, 45, 50. Just dial it into a frame rate limiter in a tool like Reva Tuner Statistics Server. All of these different frame rates represent a big leap over the console standard 30 frames per second. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Is the laptop GTX 1070 as fast as the desktop version? Well, in our tests, the 1070 really is just as fast as the desktop card. Now, mileage may vary depending on the laptop, of course, but performance is absolutely solid on this Omen. Can it be overclocked? Yes, it can, not to an amazing degree, but hey, an extra 5% of performance for nothing can't be a bad thing. Can the 1070 power a 4K screen? Well, obviously a higher end GPU will be faster, but I was still really impressed with the results I got here on some really challenging games. And yeah, a little tweaking can go a long way. I mean, there is a question of whether a 17 inch 4K screen is kind of overkill. And yeah, it probably is, but at the same time, it is kind of cool. What's nice about the HP Omen here is that you get all the advantages of IPS and a matte screen too. So no annoying reflections as you game. And yes, just to tick off some of the other additional functionality of this particular laptop, you do get a standard HDMI 2.0 output, uh, so you can power a traditional 4K screen. There's mini DisplayPort 2 and an SD card slot, LAN, and three USB 3.0 ports. Just about the only thing I missed here was Thunderbolt over USB-C, but otherwise the spec is good. The machine comes with a Core i7 7700HQ, guaranteed performance there of 2.8 gigahertz with a single core turbo of 3.8 gigahertz. Well, I'm testing the CPU here with Intel's XTU stress test, and you can see that we're getting 3.4 gigahertz on all four cores and eight threads under load with temperatures between 65 to 70 degrees. Lots of speed then and not too hot, judged by laptop standards. In a hotter room, I saw it max out at about 80 degrees, but that 3.4 gigahertz was locked even there. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it right there. Pascal GPUs in notebook form factors, they really are that good. This is a premium level desktop gaming experience in a machine you can pick up and carry away. Anyway, as always, do like and subscribe to support our work and follow us on Twitter. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.